Hi everybody, Bentley Compost Guy Christy here. It's been a quite, quite a while since I have posted any kind of an update on my Vermbin 48 system and I've never made a video about it so I thought it would be a good idea to create a little video just kind of giving you a tour of this system. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Verm bins, it's a series of do-it-yourselfer flow-through bins and I sell the plans for these on the uh, Red Room Composting website. All three of them come together in the uh, Verm bin series package. But I myself, uh, along with the help of my father, built a VB48 which is the middle model and it's about four feet long and again uh, all of these all of these systems are flow through systems but in my case I'm actually not using it for that purpose it's kind of evolved into more of a vermiculture system than a vermicomposting system I'm much more interesting in raising worms uh, in and around this bin now as an experiment I actually added both European night crawlers and red worms. I'm going to create a video uh, hopefully soon kind of comparing these two worms and just showing these worms so you know the difference if, if you're not familiar with uh, how they differ. But anyway, I added, added the two worms. Typically Euros are more of a deep diving, moisture loving worm and they're not ideally suited for a flow through system. So it was kind of an experiment just to see what would happen and they've actually done very very well. On the downside, the problem is with this uh, essentially open bottom, you know, it did have a false bottom on it, but basically there's no solid bottom. So the Euros ended up escaping in large numbers uh, early on. And I actually had a tarp down below and a bunch of cardboard sitting on top of it. And I was also moistening the system quite a lot, so there's quite a lot of moisture coming down and a lot of worms. And it, I actually wrote a post about it on, whoops, <laughs> having some technical difficulties here. I wrote a post about it on the Red Room Composting blog and sort of showed a, an image of all these European night crawlers sitting down below the bin. It was kind of creepy and it was a bit of a, a frustrating situation because... You know, obviously I want my bin to contain the worms. I don't want worms to be all over my basement floor. But on the plus side, what that led me to do is to create a bit of a... Uh, sorry people, I'm kind of bumping into stuff here. Uh, I, I created a system for basically capturing worms and for guiding any of the materials that have fallen down from the bin so that they don't end up on my basement floor. Obviously you don't want to have stuff falling on your basement floor. And so I created this sort of skirt system all the way around, all the way around the uh, under, underside of the bin here. And what this is is polyfiber uh, bags basically cut into strips. And the strips just go around the sides and then around the back and then they lead into these plastic concrete mixing trays and I've set them up essentially like little little uh, hello Fargo little little worm bins basically so that any worms that go down fall down or whatever are going to end up in a really really nice habitat down below and they've been really really thriving in there these these trays are absolutely loaded mostly with euros but also some red worms as well and the worms are, are reproducing and everything else underneath. Now as far as this this goes, unfortunately, you know, one of the downsides of this design, and it's the case with the, the Vermbin 24 as well, it's tough to find trays that fit perfectly with uh, this width. You know, I've yet to, to find a, a perfect tray that would go the entire length. I'm sure they exist, I just, I just haven't found anything. So this is sort of a in a sense a bridge between these two tubs and so any moisture that falls down it's not going to end up on the basement floor and any worms that land on there will more than likely kind of go from one side <clears throat> one side or the other and end up in a, a safe haven down here in these these tubs and what's going on up here above I should mention that my daughter my five-year-old daughter painted my Vermbin 48 as you can tell it's always fun to get her involved in any way that I can. 
But anyway, up here, I don't actually have the lid on this system right now. What I've done is create two additional beds, and these these also contain both European night crawlers and red worms. And all of this is actually kind of integrated with my own Canadian vermicomposting business. So I'm actually harvesting worms from this system and then uh, uh, selling them to customers. And this year I've started selling a Euro red mix of just sort of the two worms just to kind of uh, give customers the option of, of having both these worms uh, with one order. But anyway, so I have these on top. I don't have the lids anymore. And you know, some of you, if you've been following the blog at all, will know that I took a bunch of old uh, biodegradable plastic bags. These are things that I used to sell, actually, but they've just kind of degraded over time, and they're not good for selling anymore. So I decided to use it as almost like a, a plastic mulch to help keep moisture in in the system. And it's actually worked out quite well. It's a bit annoying to work with. I don't like having to move it out of the way all the time. But what's nice is that just like a typical plastic, it helps to uh, keep that moisture down in the system, which is really, really important, especially when you, you got lots of worms and especially with those European night crawlers. I just want to take a quick peek. I added some, what I've been adding is just this sort of uh, aged horse manure, essentially. And both species of worms absolutely love the stuff. And whenever I add it, they always just kind of go right into it really, really quickly. And then I just sort of come along and, and scoop up the material containing loads and loads of worms. And that's basically how I, I then go and harvest, harvest the worms from it. Okay, so it's, it doesn't take long. Once I add it, it starts to flatten down. You know, it's usually within a day or two I start to find loads and loads of worms in the material. And this was added, you can see, loads of worms in there. There's a European night crawler. Let's see, a good size to that one. Red worms tend to be a bit smaller. Again, I, I do want to make a video to hopefully show you kind of a bit more of a comparison. Fortunately, this camera is not the best video camera, so you're not really seeing a clear picture here, but another Euro, definitely a bigger worm, but likes sort of similar habitat and uh, does very, very well in a composting system, but just loaded with worms, absolutely loaded with worms. This is easily the most productive vermicomposting system I've ever actually had, so it's kind of exciting that way. Now, it's not, again, it's important to note that the, although this is designed to be a flow-through system, so for the purpose of creating lots of nice worm castings, this is not what I'm using it for right now. It's, it's a very, very wet system right now. I'm very focused on vermiculture, raising as many worms as I possibly can. So it's, it's not going to be producing beautiful castings anytime soon. There's lots of nice stuff that's kind of falling down into these trays, but it's very wet at the bottom. It's not the uh, sort of conditions that you want if you're planning to, to harvest lots of casting. So you kind of have to decide what, what focus you want to have. But, you know, the bottom line here is that this bin has been working extremely well. I haven't been really adding a lot in the way of food waste lately. And, you know, again, just focusing mostly on this aged horse manure because the worms love it so much. But if I was going to be uh, trying to process food waste in this system, it would definitely be handling uh, a large quantity of food waste by this point with the densities of worms that I have in there. Uh, just because it's, you know, so well aerated and again, so many worms that inevitably you know, they'd be able to process a lot of that stuff. So that's basically it for an update. I uh, hope you found this interesting, especially those of you who aren't familiar with my Verm Bin series. And if you do want to learn more about them, be sure to head on over to redwormcomposting.com. And yeah, I'll certainly be uh, posting there, and I'll actually post this update there as well. And yeah, I'm going to aim to be creating at least a few more videos over the course of the next couple months. All right, thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you again soon.